morning, and welcome to another edition of Allegheny Magazine. I'm your host, Luke Scarlett, and we have a very special show planned for you today. Let's get right to it. My first guest is Samantha Matheson, who is no stranger to the proceedings. She is a film critic for the Chicago Sun-Times, which, I'm sorry, she writes in town here on the Post-Gazette. We're going to ask her a few questions. Let's get right to it. Uh, Samantha, what can you tell us about uh, the film industry as such and all that that entails? Luke, I'm very excited about the way things are going right now because you had five films over the summer grossing over $100 million, of course, on the wow. trend of uh, Jurassic Park, of course. which grossed now, Has that been in theaters, Jurassic Park? Yes. It was out in theaters. Okay. And for and those of us who don't know uh, what that movie was about, could you maybe uh, explain a little bit? Because I myself didn't see it, so I'm not sure what that was about. Cloning dinosaurs via DNA. Okay. Okay. The other films, of course, were uh, The Firm, In the Line of Fire, we also had Sleepless in Seattle and, of course, The uh, Fugitive, mm -hmm. which made over $200 million. So when you have two films making over $500 million, that just brings the crowds to the box office. Right, I and mean, that's a lot of money. The trend, of course, was home video. You know, see it when it gets to your local video store, mm -hmm. and this summer just kind of... Okay, well, we, can, we, we can talk about yeah. home video another yeah. time. Right now, I'd like to talk about the um, financial end of filmmaking. Luke, I believe that you're going to see a trend toward frugality. I mean, the time of the 90s is over, the time of the heaven's gates and, you know, big, huge misfires like that. I think producers are going to be more inclined to the uh, 10 to $20 million budget instead of the 50 to $85 million budget. Because, of course, we saw the flop of Last Action Hero, mm -hmm. which, of course, was um, had an $80 million budget and only brought in $50 million. Mm -hmm. So that's $30 million that has to be made up. And that's $30 million that won't go to, say, a smaller, more independent filmmaker, mm -hmm. which I think is going to be an even bigger trend as things go on. Independent filmmakers not necessarily associating with a particular studio. Like someone like Clint Eastwood has been with Warner Brothers for his entire career. Mm -hmm. But I think you're going to find more people branching out, taking their ideas to different studios who are going to be willing to give them about three to four million dollars and say, be creative with that. Right. I think that that would be the uh, true meaning of the word filmmaking, is when you can get creative. Anybody can make a good movie if they're given, you know, 25, 30 million dollars and said, here, use it. You just go to an effects house and say, you know, I'd like this done, and they do all the work, while well, all you do is hang out and just come up with the initial idea. Mm -hmm. So that I think you're gonna find more creativity in movies these days. Okay, excuse me, excuse me right there. We're going to have to cut that right there. In fact, your segment's over. Thank you. We'll be right back after this message with Tony Sylvain, president of Virgin Records, right after this. Morning is your time, so treat yourself. Sugar gel toothpaste is unquestionably the best tasting toothpaste on the market. Sure, a product of this caliber will never be ADA approved and is proven ineffective against fighting cavities. In fact, it contains no fluoride whatsoever. But it sure tastes great. Sugar gel toothpaste. It sure tastes great. Welcome back for the second half of Allegheny Magazine. My second guest is Tony Sylvain. She is the president of Virgin Records in beautiful Los Angeles, California. So, Tony, what can you tell us about the ever-changing billion-dollar-a-year industry, the music business? The music industry is so huge. I mean, nobody knows what goes on behind the scenes these I, days. I've heard that. It's dog-eat-dog -dog business. Yes, it is. Everybody's out for themselves, and it's very, very competitive. And what about, uh, what's hot as far as, like, kids today? I know they're into that crud rock. Do they call it cruddy rock? The jelly jams and the... Uh, I, I believe you're talking about grunge rock? Grunge rock. That's yeah. what it is, grunge rock. Because I, I have a nephew the, who's um, like 13, and he is really into that. The whole flannel shirt. Yeah, that, and that's a fashion statement as well as a uh, way of living, etc. Tennis shoes. It, yes. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable how much, you know, one band can just make such an influence on the whole, you know, how somebody dresses or even talks. Mm -hmm. It's unreal, and I think that's what a lot of bands are out for these days. Is that what you would say is the hottest at this point, as far as music is concerned? Grunge? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, grunge and progressive, um, they all bear the same name most of the time. You know, you got Nirvana, they have a new album out. Um, 
Pearl Jam, uh, a little blind melon. Um, it's all, you know, pretty much the same. And so what you're saying is there's a lot of music out there to listen to? Basically, Basically, yes. okay. Um, I was really excited about the possibility of uh, polka returning to the mainstream. I know it's, you know, really hot in the area I live in. I was curious if you know anything about that. To tell you the truth, polka, it never really made a big statement in the music business. Um, it's maybe it's big in your area, which is great. You know, people enjoy it or whatever. Um, it, that would be wonderful. But country music, that is just a nationwide, you know, big deal. Mm -hmm. I mean, country clubs everywhere, country radio stations. I mean, Pittsburgh itself has three country radio stations, and that's mm -hmm. that's unbelievable. And people like Garth Brooks and. Uh, um, you know, Reba McIntyre, Dolly Parton even, she's still around and she's she's doing great. The whole, you know, progressive music scene and that that is just humongous. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's in it the whole Seattle thing that came about a couple of years ago and it just keeps growing and growing growing. Even from the past, you know, back in the eighties, it's just un unreal. Right. So it's you know Everything's kind of up and down. You know, even the yeah, I'm sure everything is kind of up and down. I'm sorry, we have to uh, cut it there. We ran out of time. Um, but I certainly would like to uh, thank my guests, and I hope they would uh, feel comfortable being invited back to uh, Allegheny Magazine. I'd like to thank my guests personally, Tony Sylvain and my very good friend, Samantha Matheson. Thank you, guys. And I hope you guys all join us again next week.